Welcome back. When it comes to healthy food, we know plants are good for us, but our next guest says they're downright magical. Yes, and she's here to share recipes from her latest cookbook, Plant Magic. Please welcome best-selling author and registered dietitian, Desiree Nielsen. Good to have you on the show. Thank you so much. All right, so before we dig in, let's start talking about what makes plants so magical. You know, I think when you're new to plant-based cooking, mm -hmm. you're thinking so much about, oh, well, what am I not eating? Am I not eating cheese? I'm not eating meat. But when you really start opening up to it, there's this world of flavors and textures and colors. And so many people find that they actually have a more varied, more diverse diet. And so I love showing people that plant-based cooking can be just as fun, just as flavorful as anything they're used to. Okay, I love well, that. Well, you're starting with something super fun. I feel yeah. like it will be a hit with kids. And you say it's actually a breakfast for people who don't think that they have time for it. This is brownie batter breakfast toast. Does yeah. that not sound incredible? Incredible. Mm -hmm. Now, what makes this a healthy start to the day? Because it doesn't sound super healthy. Sounds healthy to me. I I, right? I mean, what's wrong with brownies? So I wanted to emulate that rich, fudgy texture of brownies. And for someone who's like, oh, I could get a piece of toast. I could get a piece of toast in the morning. This is actually made from hemp hearts. Mm. Hemp hearts are incredibly high in protein and omega-3 fatty acids and minerals. Mm. So you get that little fudgy chocolate hit, mm. but it's actually incredibly nutrient dense. Mm. I love that you're recommending chocolate for breakfast, but yes, it also ties in nicely with something you practice called positive nutrition. So explain that idea to us while we devour yeah. these. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, you know, particularly online, so much messaging around nutrition is really negative. Don't eat this, don't eat that. Mm -hmm. Fall into these really strict boxes mm -hmm. when that's not actually what makes us healthy. Your body has requirements for certain vitamins and minerals and nutrients. And so I like to focus on what to add. Mm. It's a far easier message to swallow, really. Mm -hmm. And so when we think, okay, let's how figure out how to eat more vegetables. Let's figure out how to get those hemp hearts into our diet for mm -hmm. omega-3s. And when we take this messaging, nutrition and taking care of yourself feels a lot more joyful mm -hmm. and it feels a lot more positive. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Well, you're speaking my language because obviously I, I'm all about pleasure and you say this is an often overlooked component of wellness, adding... Yeah connecting pleasure and food. So tell us more about that. It is, you know, I was so lucky to grow up in a house where food was the metronome of life. You know, my grandmother would cook breakfast and as soon as that was done, she would start preparing lunch. And so we always gathered around the table and food is so much more than just nutrients. Mm -hmm. It is culture, it is connection. And it's joy like how amazing is it to go out with your friends and have this long evening over dinner, the right? Best. No matter who pays for uh, it. Right, no matter who pays <laughs> for it. Absolute best. <laughs> yeah. And so I think we need to realize that that also applies even when we're trying trying to take care of, of ourselves. If mm -hmm. we have some sort of health concern we're addressing or we're just, we've got some sort of health goal, mm -hmm. we shouldn't lose that pleasure piece because that's inherently sustain, way more sustainable than when we're trying to, you know, do this fad diet for four weeks and yeah. then yeah. fall apart. Which never works. Never. never, you know, please, as a dietitian, the fad diets never work. Like, yeah. just cut it out. Yeah. 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 All right, so let's keep the uh, pleasure yeah. going. So mm -hmm. we're going to try uh, carrot and zatar pancakes. Did I say that correctly? Yes. Okay, so let's dive in. Yeah. So zatar is one of my favorite spice blends. So it's uh, very typical to Levantine cuisine. And it's because there's a wild oregano that grows mm. in that area. So this is a little bit of a cheater blend with mm, basic wow. pantry herbs and spices. Mm -hmm. And I love a fritter, a pancake. Mm -hmm. It's such an easy way to grate a bunch of veggies to get those in. And then the nice green sauce just got like garlic, that freshness, that acidity. Cilantro. Cilantro. Yeah. I love, you can add these as like a sandwich filling. They can be, you know, on the side of your plate. But I also love serving if you're doing a snack platter mm -hmm. for everyone. You can put this as part of a snack spread and then everybody can dip. You can do smaller ones so people can just dip. Oh, that sounds delicious. Yeah. So delightful. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about protein because I know a lot of people who are concerned to making that shift to more veg based yeah. if they're not getting enough protein. How yeah. What do you say to that? One of our biggest misconceptions about protein mm -hmm. is that protein is a food, AKA meat. Protein is a nutrient found in all sorts of foods and it's abundant in plants. You simply need to know where to get it because I find as a dietitian, people remove the meat from their plate and not realize they have to put a plant-based food that brings that protein back in. So just a half a cup of tofu is 10 grams of protein. Tempeh is also really rich, but also the whole spectrum of lentils, chickpeas, and even hemp hearts. Three tablespoons of hemp hearts has 10 grams of protein in oh, three wow. tiny little tablespoons. Oh, like wow. that's incredible. I no you can idea. absolutely get all the protein you need on a plant based diet. That's All right, so, so when it comes to protein, what are the guidelines that you, re that you recommend then? 
Yeah, so it's really different for every person, their activity level, their body size, their age. A really easy rule of thumb if people are trying to figure it out for themselves, because there's so many questions about protein, mm -hmm. is you can take your weight in pounds, okay. divide it by two, and that will give you a nice approximation of the grams of protein per day, and then you just split up. So a 150 pound person would be about 75 grams of protein, give or take. Okay. So try 20 to 25 at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Snacks can fill in the rest, easy. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, I think everyone here loves a sheet pan meal. Yeah. It's super easy, but mm -hmm. you've brought something that I didn't even realize, right? Yeah. <laughs> I just love yes. That. So good. But this is a meal that I didn't even know could be done on a sheet pan. So this is a, a gnocchi dish done on a sheet pan. Talk it, about this. It is a gnocchi. No. So we think of boiling gnocchi, but actually you can pan fry. I prefer it pan fried I or roasted. Pan fried. Okay. It okay. gets this really chewy texture and a little bit of crispiness on the outside from the oil. And this was inspired by actually kind of the flavors of like a Spanish sausage. So paprika and cumin. And we do the kidney beans, which when they roast, they split up, they get all doughy and like really, really cozy and comfortable. And then a nice light vinaigrette. So it's essentially a little, uh, you know, alternative to a grain bowl, something a little bit different, Spanish inspired. Oh my gosh, I have not stopped eating since you started talking. <laughs> um, this is so good. Okay, so but glad. we have one more thing to get okay. through. Yeah. Final dish is a sumac roasted eggplant with maple tahini drizzle. Yes. Talk to me about I that. I mean, what's not to like? Yeah. I am a huge eggplant fan. My family is not. And so I'm always making sure that I'm developing recipes mm. with eggplant for my books because that when, was I, good. when I eat them, my family doesn't take them away from me, so I get the whole thing to myself. And with that maple tahini <laughs> drizzle, that's what you want. It's just a little sweetness, a little nuttiness, a little earthy, mm -hmm. and just so, so simple to make. And it looks really beautiful. And if you like that style of eating where there's just a bunch of plates on the table, and yeah. I love doing that, a bunch of different vegetable dishes. Yeah. yeah, some nice bread on the table, so easy. So yeah, great. fantastic. First of yeah. all, anybody who doesn't like eggplant should be served that because that is incredible. Okay. So good. Thank you so much for stopping <laughs> Thank by. You. Thank you. Even though I finally stopped eating. All right, so <laughs> Plant Magic is available now. And good news for our studio audience. You're all going home with your very own coffee. Hey there, what did you think? Drop your comments below and join the conversation. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can find more on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. See you soon.